What is up everybody? I'm No Lux Given here with your afternoon snap and today we're going to be talking about the next new game mode coming soon to Marvel Snap. Now, astute viewers might realize that nobody else is talking about this new game mode today. It's an April Fool's prank, kind of a prank, kind of clickbait. And while I am going to talk about something that might seem a little bit silly or far-fetched, I'm actually being serious. The subject matter of this video is District X, and I know that a lot of players despise this location, but I actually love it. No prank, no April Fools, I genuinely love this location because I think it adds a lot to Marvel Snap that it's missing that you would otherwise get in a limited format. If you're not familiar with the term limited, it generally is what is used to refer to draft in Magic the Gathering and other games, or Arena in Hearthstone, and is pretty similar to Auto Battlers, which I play a lot of on this channel. And there's a lot to love in limited structured formats, as opposed to constructed, which is all that Marvel Snap currently is. Marvel Snap, currently, you have a huge advantage based off of your collection level, or how much money or time you have put into the game. And limited formats, even the playing field. The biggest thing about limited formats is that all players go into it on exactly the same page with no advantage over their opponents. And I think that that's huge. And District X does a lot to balance the collection levels in the game because your, de your deck is just going to get replaced by completely random cards. Now, there are some other things that make limited formats really exciting. The primary one being card evaluation. Instead of just downloading a deck from the internet, you actually have to make decisions based off what you feel is the the power level of that various cards as they're presented to you. And while you don't have that exact thing with District X, which is just totally random, you do have the snap mechanic in Marvel Snap. In this game, I'm recognizing that I was given both a Black Panther and an Arnim Zola, and also a Taskmaster to potentially use with this Black Panther. And that gives me, though uh, one of the locations is flooded, and uh, one of the locations I threw an Ebony Mine, so we're not really going to get to use the Taskmaster uh, because I want to throw this Black Panther into Kamartage. I think that that makes the most sense here. But the idea that you can snap and retreat based off the information that you have out of District X, I think makes it really, really interesting in Marvel Snap. And kind of the thesis of this video is I think it'd be interesting if there was a mode where maybe you could add any cards to your deck, but then District X was always one of the three locations that popped up every single game. We actually don't get to use Black Panther Arnim Zola combo here exactly, but it still works out pretty well for me. My opponent does not have as good of cards, and an Iron Heart in Kamar Taj is not going to be quite enough for them to take it, and we win in all three locations. Now, the other thing true of limited formats is you are oftentimes forced into playing with cards that you wouldn't otherwise even play in Marvel Snap. And that's what we're going to see in this game. Previous game, I had Black Panther Arnim Zola. That's a normal combo in Marvel Snap. This game, though, I've got Spider-Woman plus Doctor Strange, two cards that I've rarely even played before in Marvel Snap, and I think that that is so awesome to have new pieces come into the game, at least in new combinations, means that you have to think about new combos for the first time which I think actually makes for much more fun gameplay because then you have to be creative. You're not just going through the lines of what your deck is supposed to do. You're creating brand new lines that have never been seen before and might not ever be seen again. Once we, as the card pool continues to grow in Marvel Snap, the, the possibilities of weird combinations of cards that are gonna wind up getting played together in a District X mode or just games that include District X are going to be more and more varied over time. And 
While you wouldn't think that Spider-Woman is really a combo with Doctor Strange, we get to make a pretty nice maneuver here. My opponent plays Vision. By the way, this game was a pretty long time ago, as you can tell from some of the numbers currently on the screen. Uh, but my opponent plays Vision to dodge Spider-Woman, and they have a huge Devil Dinosaur over in the hub. This was a turn one District X game, by the way. Uh, there's kind of varying degrees of District X games that either comes up turn one and then you are just playing with all brand new cards or when it comes up turn three it is sometimes not as exciting but in this one we get to make a pretty exciting final turn doctor strange to move spider woman over into the hub plus moon knight to make my opponent discard a card and shrink their devil dinosaur means i'm effectively putting eight points of power or uh, 16 points of power rather over into the hub on this final turn 14 points of power and then making my opponent discard a card if I had discarded Wolverine though that would have been even more power on top it's still a surprising comeback there to take my opponent in the hub which was only possible thanks to Doctor Strange and Spider-Woman this is a game 3 District X game so I'm mostly getting to do the busted thing that my deck already wants to do. This was like Lockjaw Thanos at its most busted iteration. But one thing that I think that is also really cool about limited formats, like I said, is kind of card evaluation. And there is a little bit of that in District X games because sometimes people will be given cards that they've never had an opportunity to play with. And that really does, I think, kind of act as a nice little skill tester in that certain players are going to know how to play certain cards. In this case, Jean Grey has started to see some play more recently. Back then, really, nobody was playing it. I'm also doing something kind of cute in this game where I keep playing Widow's Bite into Cloning Vats. I've got a Lockjaw at two different locations, uh, but this gives me a free card to play into Lockjaw each turn. So even on this final turn here, I get to throw this Widow's Bite into Lockjaw while throwing a Giganto that I got off of District X over into negative zone. Meanwhile, my opponent is forced into playing into Gene Gray's location, and I get to play to both of those other two locations. So my opponent probably could have just retreated here, uh, but they are going to stay in it uh, thinking that Claw kind of allows them to affect two locations, but it's not going to be enough in the cloning vats, and it's not going to be enough to stop this victory. Here's another quick example. I actually think that this game is really fun. I use Mind Stone to draw two new one-cost cards from my deck, and the Hala plus my Gladiator, which was a card I was actually playing. This was my Tempo Thanos list talked about a few times recently, uh, but that allows me to play death on turn five. And then turn six, I'm going to have a few different options that I could potentially play. That's actually not, I think, the most interesting part of this game. Uh, there's going to be something a little bit different. My opponent actually also has a death, and because it costs four, they're able to play both death and Titania on the penultimate turn. Titania into a location where your opponent already has three cards is generally pretty good. However, here I get to make use of my knowledge of mechanics in the game and realize that Arnim Zola actually wins me District X while applying additional power to both of the other two locations. So it's pretty sweet. I actually high roll here by hitting the demon and my opponent tries to play Blob. That's actually what I wanted to talk about in this clip. The fact that my opponent plays a Blob, not recognizing that Blob is bad now. My opponent doesn't have any cards in their deck through District X. It's just going to be one armor, and Blob gets a lot worse in this game mode when your deck is random cards. And I think that it's important to be constantly evaluating how your cards are working. And this is like a very specific example, but definitely one where you have to watch out for District X. We're kind of getting into some of the spice of this video now. 
And this is where things start to get really spicy with this District X game. I'm playing a Galactus deck here. That's not gonna be the spicy part. The spicy part of this game is actually going to be what happens from District X. This is old, old Galactus. I've had some of these clips for a long time, and I've been thinking about District X as a game mode for a long time. There's actually a lot more that District X brings to Marvel Snap. It actually kind of brings back a truer version of Marvel Snap. A version of Marvel Snap where you have no clue what your opponent could possibly do on the final turns of the game. There's not these strict lines that your opponent is going to play into, and we've seen that in these past games. I've had some crazy surprising victories, mostly with Arnim Zola so far, but there are things that my opponent really cannot prepare for. Uh, in this game, I'm just snapping with Daredevil plus Professor X. It's kind of like a reasonable enough reason to snap here. And uh, if my opponent didn't play the Kamartage, I could have won that location, but they played Gamora there, so I definitely want to ignore that location now. I could just go for like Dr. Octopus in the Gamma Lab. That will shrink my opponent's Warpath. This isn't like the best situation for me because if I just play Professor X in the Gamma Lab, then I'm really far behind in District X on the final turn of the game. So I'm gonna go for the Dr. Octopus over into the Gamma Lab, dodging my opponent's Gamora, and we'll see what J-Hugs has here. They've got a Mr. Fantastic, so that'll make up for some of those lost points on Warpath, as will this Dr. Doom, and then a Magic is actually a total game changer. That's a magic from District X. So now we've got a seven turn game all of a sudden. And I wasn't looking like I was in a great spot a few seconds ago, but now I think I can actually do something pretty clever. I'm gonna play Thanos in Nikmartage, putting me up to 16 points in that location. Now notably, none of the cards currently in my hand can beat my opponent in Kamartage, but my opponent cannot add additional power to Kamartage. Would you stay in it if you were up against me here, knowing that like any card played to Kamartage wins me the game and you can't really expect to win Limbo unless you have like Spectrum or some other ways to add power? No, J-Hugs is gonna get out of it. And I think this is something that can only be bluffed in a District X. This randomness is probably the biggest problem that people have with District X. The fact that you can't play around everything, you have no clue what your opponent could possibly be doing. And that just makes the game feel very, very chaotic. And also your opponent can just roll better than you. They could get lucky, you could get unlucky, and that feels bad. I think that a lot of that would be taken away if players willingly are queuing into a mode that they know District X is going to show up in. However, I can still understand if this isn't for everybody. I love it. I'm no Lux given because I love randomness. I think that randomness adds a huge amount of skill testing but it also just adds a lot of fun. And the crazy, I live for the crazy low rolls and the crazy high rolls that are in games of all sorts here. And in this one, we, we kind of get some low rolls here. The game is not going super great for me. Uh, so I just decided to throw out a destroyer here on turn four, which is like reasonable, kind of a, a power reset, take away some of this clog that my opponent has given me. And then I'm gonna try to clog my opponent back here with the Hobgoblin. I initially think Hobgoblin in Grand Central is probably a good idea because my opponent will also have a card added to Grand Central from their hand this turn uh, and and probably I should have played the hobgoblin there to be totally honest I just didn't know if they could like move over vision to bunk me instead they're gonna shang chi my destroyer and not move the vision over so my hobgoblin is totally boned now I do get a free Hulk into Grand Central so that is kind of looking up and then I also get a 35 power null so things are kind of looking up once again, and I can actually use this Knoll to flip any location, and then it's just a matter of 
Do I think my opponent has it? Do I think they have a nine power card in a game where most of the cards came from District X? And the cards that didn't come from District X are like Squirrel Girl and Debris, and of course, Shang-Chi. But I think that Null could possibly win this game, so I'm gonna stay in it. Kind of the opposite of the last one here, but still kind of a surprising comeback for me. Was not expecting to draw a Null. I guess I could have had like Giganto or something to flip X Mansion back in my favor, so it's not totally crazy that I drew Null specifically but it is going to get me the win. That's gonna be it for me today. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'm no luck's given, peace.